Hello, Courier Nation. Welcome to the Deliver on Your Business podcast, where you are the boss. Each week, we talk about how to make the most of your business as an independent contractor, as a courier delivering for gig economy apps like Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, and so many others. Well, hey there, Courier Nation. Welcome back to the Deliver on Your Business podcast. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning ahead of time. Uh, we might get a little bit of background noise. There's there's a lot of yard work going on outside, and there's uh, there's barky dogs because of the yard work and all of that stuff. So hopefully it doesn't come through too much. And uh, I'll just maybe if I just keep talking, then it'll kind of drown all that out, right? I want to start off with kind of the sponsorship portion of the podcast episode. And uh, it's not really a sponsorship because it's me. But uh, what I would like to do is invite you to head on over to the entrecourier.com website. And especially you can go to entrecourier.com slash basic bag. Uh, that's the first item that we've got. And uh, well, what I hope will eventually kind of get into a little more of a full-blown Entree Courier store. But uh, we started off with uh, just this bag. The idea was to provide something that you can identify you as an independent delivery professional, but without having to have a DoorDash or Postmates or Grubhub logo slapped all over it. It's something more to kind of identify you for your independence. It gives you a little more flexibility, especially if you're one of those, one of us that, uh, you know, we multi-app. We'll be talking about multi-apping today's podcast. But, you know, when you work multiple apps to, to be tied down to a particular logo, I wanted to provide something that was, you know, kind of entry level, uh, not not very expensive. It's less than ten dollars, and and that includes the shipping. And so you can head on over and check that out if you want to. All right, so on to the episode today. So as I mentioned there in that uh, intro there, that uh, we're going to talk about working multiple apps. Now, is that a good idea right now? Uh, is it a good thing to do when you're delivering for Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates? I'm going to say it is. In fact, I would say that for most people, it's probably a necessity. At what extent or what level you do, that's something that you got to decide. But I really recommend that you think about more than one platform. Now, when should you focus on just one at a time? When should you start moving into more? That's what I want to talk about today. Now, the only thing right now that seems to be consistent in the delivery world is inconsistency. Some places things are just booming and other places it seems like things have just totally dried up. You hear some people that uh, that are making a huge amount of money and uh, I've been happy with uh, with what I've been able to do lately. You hear other places where they're really struggling. But here's one of the reasons that I want to talk about this today and it's because I think we're starting to see a change. I think we're starting to see things slow down. Delivery has been booming lately, at least in the industry. Sometimes not as much for the drivers, but I think that that's going to start slowing down on the industry-wide side right now. And there's a couple of things involved. You know, the first thing is people have been tired of being stuck inside, you know. They're getting tired of delivery, and uh, with things starting to open up, they're going to want to move out. Uh, another thing that you want to think about is people are starting to run out of money. And uh, that's a huge issue right now. Uh, I think you're going to start finding fewer and fewer people able to afford getting delivery. And then it's almost summertime, folks. And if you've done this for more than a year or so, you know that summer means deliveries slow down. People are going out more. They're picnicking more. They're barbecuing more. And they're doing delivery less. Now, this year, we haven't had the chance to experience kind of that slow, gradual ramp down that usually happens because of the pandemic and things just all of a sudden picked up. But I think as much as things picked up, they could be dropping and they could be dropping fast. And on top of that, you've got this glut of people that have moved into doing delivery now because of the pandemic, people that have been, you know, they were laid off, they're unemployed. And delivery was a good way to do it. Or people that were part-time delivery that decided to go full-time when, you know, things slowed down with whatever else they were doing. This was one of those few things that people could go to to make money with some kind of consistency. And so, you know, you had a lot of people join. But if things slow down, are the drivers going to kind of drop off as much as a result of that? So I think we could see some real slowdowns. And I don't know about your market. I'm starting to see signs of it here. 
And even though I've been able to do really well and I've made more per hour lately than I've ever made, um, the other thing that I'm seeing is I'm starting to see more gaps in between orders, especially with Grubhub. Grubhub in my market had always been steady. It was like every two minutes you knew there was going to be an order with Grubhub. That's not happening now. And maybe Grubhub is punishing me because I'm not accepting enough orders. I don't know. You never know with Grubhub. They're always trying to play some kind of a game or another. But I'm just seeing I'm seeing more gaps where it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes between orders. And that's a sign that things are slowing down. Another sign is with DoorDash. Um, gray zones are back. If you're not familiar with DoorDash, what happens is when you log into the app, you get a color-coded map that shows up at your region. And the brighter the red in the delivery zone, it means that they're busier there. The gray zones were places that you could not log into, that they already had too many drivers, and it was just impossible to actually log in. And I think I warned you about the dogs. I apologize there. But, you know, when things got crazy with the pandemic and when uh, when deliveries started blowing up like they did, I think DoorDash got so overwhelmed that they really didn't want to mess with anymore with those restricting the schedules there. Because I think DoorDash, to their credit, they tried to keep it from getting too many people logged into one area at one time. And that protected the drivers that were logged in. Uh, I think that that was probably a good thing. But when things got so crazy, it's like they had to abandon that uh, because they just needed drivers whenever they could get drivers. And so they just opened the floodgates and it was a free for all. The gray zones are coming back. And so I think that's telling me that things are starting to move back to a little bit more of a normal volume. Now, I am going somewhere with all of this talking about this. But one other issue that you're seeing is, you know, that's really part of the pandemic is app issues. Uh, Door, DoorDash has remained true to their door crash reputation. You know what I mean? Uh, they've, they've had such regular and frequent outages. I'm kind of amazed that they're able to keep customers as much as the app is going down. But the thing is that, you know, when the app goes down, people can't make money. I'm starting to see more glitches on Grubhub and Uber Eats. I've lately seen some things where it used to be with Uber Eats. Usually if there was an issue, it was more just that you couldn't get your payment information for the last several deliveries for a little while. But after a couple hours, it would update. It didn't really impact the way you were able to do things. But I have had a couple times lately something that I've never had with Uber Eats where some of the information just disappeared from the screen. I'd reboot the phone. I'd, uh, you know, stop and restart the app and... Uh, it didn't seem to matter. And I think it was just because they were so overwhelmed that something wasn't working right. You couldn't contact the customer. You couldn't, in fact, you didn't even know for sure who the customer was. There would be one screen that you would uh, see one name, but when you go into the order details, it would be the other name. And the other name was the name that was what the restaurant had, but you didn't know if that was the name for the customer. And you couldn't contact the customer to find out. So, you know, it was just kind of weird issues like that. And uh, when, when that starts happening, that's what I say. I'm done with Uber Eats for right now because I don't want to run into an issue that's going to keep me spinning my wheels trying to get a hold of a customer that's not there, you know. So that's, you know, the, the thing is, though, is when these things happen, either, you know, the crashes or things just all of a sudden get real slow. I see one common denominator when people are impacted by those issues. You know, when people say, I can't make money now because the app is down. And people say, I can't make money because things are so slow. I can't make money because they've got way too many drivers. And the funny thing is, I'm sitting there thinking, man, I'm glad I'm not delivering in your market because I'm making some pretty good money. Then I find out sometimes that some of those people are in my market. And so I'm thinking, what's up with that? You know, is there something that the universe is just against them or whatever? Because I know, you know, when my, when my acceptance rate is below the Mendoza line, you got to be a baseball fan to understand that one probably. But, you know, my acceptance rate is as low as it is. I know that I'm not a favorite with any of these apps. They're not giving me preference. So what is it there? And it's, I don't think it's that I'm better than anybody. I don't think I'm more favored or anything like that. Because here's the thing. For two years, my income's been steady. You know, I have not seen any wild fluctuations. It is like week to week, month to month. I'm making very close to the same amount of money. And really, the only real fluctuation has been these last couple of months when it's been a lot higher. A lot of that is just because I can get deliveries done a lot faster because of all the different conditions there. But, you know, the thing is, is I'm not seeing, I don't have the drop off in the summertime. 
I don't have the drop off when one app gets a little slower. And I start wondering, am I lucky or what? But the thing that I'm seeing is that there's a common denominator when people are really impacted and when they're really having trouble during different periods. And it seems like the biggest issue is that it's usually somebody that is working almost specifically, if not completely specifically for one app. Now, here's the thing. When you're running a business, there is one huge mistake that you want to avoid, and that is not to rely too much on one customer. If anything happens to that business relationship, you're screwed, you know? And folks, that's pretty much true across industry lines. I guess whatever you're in. Here's the thing. You got to remember this. You are running a business. DoorDash and Grubhub and Uber Eats, they made that choice when they called you an independent contractor. And that's why I've got this site is to help people to encourage or encourage people to embrace and really take advantage of that role as a business owner. And that's what you are legally and technically you're a business owner. So act like it. But here's the thing is when in this environment where you're an independent contractor, these companies are your customers. So if you are getting all of your money from just one customer, whether that's Grubhub, whether it's only DoorDash or whoever, you're vulnerable. And if the app crashes, you can't make money. If things are slow, you can't make money. If they hired too many drivers, you can't make money. If they deactivate you for something that's out of your control or something you didn't do, because none of them give you a real chance to kind of get back on real easily or anything like that, all of a sudden you can't make money. When you rely on only one customer and something happens to that relationship or something happens with that particular customer, you can't make money. That's why you've got to keep your options open. Okay, so how do we do this? How do you do this multi-app thing? Can't you get in trouble for it? You cannot get in trouble for it. Um, here's the deal is when they made you an independent contractor, they're not allowed to restrict you from working with anybody else. And when they made you a business owner, they put you into a position where sometimes you have to operate as a business. And sometimes that operating as a business means you've got to have more than one customer. Now, here's something that I want to bring up. I think a very, very important rule about all of this before we go any further into working several apps. And that is understand this about your agreement with these companies, but also understand this about your commitment to these companies. And it boils down to this. Your agreement is on a delivery by delivery basis. You do not have an agreement that says you're going to accept so many offers. You do not have an agreement that says you've got to act like an employee at all when you're not on a delivery. Your agreement with the company starts when you accept an order and it ends when you drop off the order. Now, part of that agreement, I believe, as a business owner is you're also making a commitment. As soon as you accept an order, you're making a commitment to that company that you're going to do the best time job that you can do while you're doing what you just agreed to do. And what you agreed to do is to accept and complete that delivery. I really want you to keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about, though, these different stages, because I think that you can move into working multiple apps, and you can do it in stages. In fact, I don't think you have to move to all three stages. I think for some people, going to stage one is going to be plenty enough. And, um, and, and for others, it, it makes sense to move on to stage two and maybe to stage three. Now, stage one is, it's essentially just you're working with each of the different apps, but you're working with them independently. It, you know, and, and the reason that I think I would say stage one first before you go to, go to the others is you want to go through this stage so that you get familiar with the app because you've got to be familiar with each of the apps before you can move on to the either of the stages. But here's the deal. I really recommend, I really encourage that you get signed on to two or three or four different apps, maybe more. It, it kind of depends on where you're at, what you're comfortable with. Get yourself so that you can at any point get on with any of those others. You may not necessarily be committed to doing any one of those apps, but get yourself available because you want to have that as a fallback if nothing else. But I do really recommend then that once you are signed on with an app, spend some time with it. 
spend time getting to know the app, spend time committed to that app. Don't, don't try and switch back and forth yet or anything like this. All this is, is let's say if you started, what I did was I started with Uber Eats. And then when I picked up Grubhub, I did nothing but Grubhub for a while because it was all about getting to know how Grubhub worked. And then I picked up DoorDash and I did nothing but DoorDash for a little while. And, and actually what would happen is I would do, when I did DoorDash, that's all I did was DoorDash. And then I would switch back to Grubhub and I would do some, some time with Grubhub. But when you're doing delivery, the whole idea is you log on with an app and that is your only app that you're doing. But you know, this, this can work real well for a lot of people because then if the app crashes on DoorDash, okay, now you log on to Uber Eats and that's all you're doing is Uber Eats. You're not, you're not putting yourself in a position where you're going to cause any problems for anybody or anything like that. But the big thing is do this to get to know how each of the apps work because each app has its own idiosyncrasies. You know, each platform does things so differently. They dispatch differently. They've got different customers. Sometimes they've got the same customers, but it acts a lot different between some of the others. You know, with the Chipotle on Uber Eats and DoorDash, at least right now, you can just go pick up. But with Grubhub, you have to order and pay. Um, I have some restaurants that on Uber Eats, I know that food's going to be ready as soon as I get there. The same restaurant, if that order came from Grubhub, I know there's a real high possibility that I'm going to have to wait a while. Same restaurant, but it's just different with the different apps. You want to get to know each of these because the more you know how each of these apps work, the more you know who their customers are and who you're going to be busy with, that's going to help you move into the next stage. Once you've gotten familiar with them, then you can move into stage two. And this is where you're doing what I call the toggle on, toggle off multi-apping. Once you're familiar with it, with how another app works, what you want to do is you want to pick two. I really recommend that you pick the one that you know the best and make that your primary app and then pick a second one. That's going to be your secondary app. The reason that I say you want to have one that's primary is I think you want to have in your mind that if all things are equal on an order that comes in, you're going to go with the primary. Uh, it's just, uh, it's something that makes it sometimes easier to make a decision. Okay. But here's what you do is you go available on both apps and you wait for the orders to come in. You log in, the orders come in. Usually you don't have to wait that long and an offer comes in. It doesn't matter which app it comes in on. You evaluate that offer. Is this offer going to pay what you need to pay? You should have some kind of an idea that you use for evaluating offers. I recommend doing a 40 cent rule. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. I'll put a link in the show notes, but you evaluate that offer and whether or not you take it or not, you know, you kind of go with that decision. If you decide not to take it, you just keep them both on. As soon as you find one that you say, okay, this is a good one. This is one that I want to take. Now you've committed to that offer and you're going to shut off the other app. Or if it is like some apps like Grubhub, you can't just turn it off because you're on a scheduled block. You can get in trouble actually for logging off. You're not supposed to get in trouble for that kind of thing. But anyway, you, you know what I'm talking about. And so on some apps, sometimes you just have to make a commitment that, okay, I'm not going to accept any offers from them until I'm done or until I'm, you know, about ready to finish. And then I can start looking at offers from, from somebody else. But the whole thing is, is like you turn them both on, but as soon as you accept one, you are committed to that one. You will not take on a second offer at the same time or anything like that. Don't try and operate more than one at a time while you're in this stage. You want to get good at this part of it. You want to get good at just juggling two apps in this way and start off with really only two. I, that's what I really recommend because you can overwhelm yourself. Just start off with two and get to know how they work with each other. You'll get into a pattern after a while. You start figuring out, hey, this works real well. And um, after you've done this for a while and you've gotten familiar with, let's say, how Grubhub and Uber Eats work together or Grubhub and DoorDash or whoever, you know, at that point, then you can decide if you want to open that up to a third app. And maybe the best way to do that when you introduce a third app is just open it up against your primary, you know? So let's say you did Grubhub and you did Uber Eats. You've got real familiar with those. Well, now you want to throw DoorDash into the mix, but you're only going to do it with Grubhub and DoorDash at first because you're trying to get a feel for how those work together. Then after a while, 
and you might start getting brave and you might just start deciding that you want to try and do three apps at one time or whatever. Get to know how they work with each other. But here's the deal. Do not let a delivery offer that you accept from anybody interfere with your commitment to any other deliveries that you've already accepted. But try that with that toggle on. Do that for a while. Give that time. Make sure that you're comfortable. Just make sure that you're very comfortable before you move on to stage three. Stage three is where you slowly add in those stacked or those mixed deliveries. And you're going to notice sometimes already in stage two that you're going to get two deliveries. Boy, they they are in the same place. They're going to the same place. I would say resist that temptation until you're very comfortable with how things work with just that toggle on, toggle off. But at some point, you get to a point where you decide, all right, I'm going to give this a try. But this is why it is so important that you know those platforms, because you got to know that if you're going to accept two orders at the same time, you've got to feel very comfortable that the food's going to be ready in both places. That only happens when you know the apps. That only happens when you know the restaurants and you know your market. And you're going to make sure that those offers are going the same direction, that you're not going out of your way for one to deliver the other. And um, so it, it all comes back to the offers have to line up. They have to be in such a way that taking one offer is not going to make the other offer, you know, really late or anything like that. You can probably slow things down on that second offer, maybe by about five minutes, five minutes, I don't think is a big deal. But if it's going to make it a half hour, you know, you absolutely do not take that second delivery, you know, you only take stuff when they actually line up. And they're going to line up, I think, almost perfectly to really make it worth doing. A lot of people don't go to this phase. And, and I understand that. I think it again, it, it comes back to it comes back to knowing you, and it comes back to knowing your market. You're going to find uh, you're going to find you're going to make mistakes sometimes. Uh, I, there's times I make mistakes with this. Sometimes I don't pay as close as attention as I should to where the delivery is going. And uh, there are times that sometimes I, you know, I've taken, I've accepted two offers, and I realize they don't fit, and I've got to decide to drop one. Make that decision sooner or later so it doesn't make the other order late. You know, I mean, evaluate that as soon as you. Take, you know, the other offer, double check that because if it's like, oh man, I don't think I should have done that. Go ahead and drop it then so that it's not, you know, a long time before you do that. And now that other offer is going to be late. Doing that though, I think it allows you to keep your commis- commitment to both customers. It makes you, it, it lets you keep that commitment to get those deliveries done as soon as you can do it. You're going to make mistakes and that's just the hazard of multi-apping. But over time, You'll learn from those mistakes and you're going to find yourself becoming incredibly efficient. Okay, so once you've kind of figured that out, you know, what I want to do now is I just want to talk real quickly about each of the main four platforms. Uh, It's really going to be a brush over because I'm trying not to get too detailed too long with this. Each platform, I think, has got strengths and weaknesses. I think they've got challenges, they've got issues, and I think they've got some good things to offer. I don't think there's any one platform that is just perfect for multi-apping because each one's got issues. There might be one that maybe is just, to me, in my mind, my opinion is kind of the ultimate no-go. But we'll get into that in a minute. Let's talk about each one. Let's start with Grubhub. Grubhub's got, you know, one thing they've got is they've got a good map so you can see where you're going. It's pretty clear where you're going. You've got to pay attention to that map, though. Once you've accepted, you can go in and you can pull up the address information. And usually you can. Sometimes you're playing some games and they hide that. But more often than not, you know where you're going. And so when an offer comes in from somebody else, you can pull that open on Grubhub and kind of evaluate your offers. I think with Grubhub, it's harder to log in and out. Uh, You can't really do that toggle in, toggle off as easily because of this whole thing that I mentioned earlier that when you're on a scheduled block, uh, they frown on you logging out. So generally, if you're multi-apping with Grubhub, it means that you're committing to being okay with rejecting a lot of offers in a row. If you're not comfortable with doing that, you may not want to try uh, multi-apping with Grubhub. Now, Grubhub's dispatching can be a blessing and a curse. The good news is they pace their delivery offers about two minutes apart from one another, And I think there's some ways that it makes it more manageable to evaluate offers. You don't get quite as overwhelmed as you do with some of the other apps. 
but some of their problem is their tendency to offer you deliveries that are a lot further away than some of the others. Now, sometimes that can work out actually pretty good because what happens, okay, Grubhub is usually slow. Um, you know, the other problem with dispatching is Grubhub tends to send you to restaurants when the food's not ready as much. But that can kind of work in, you know, in, in your favor a little bit because if you get, let's say, you get an offer on another platform that's close and the restaurant for Grubhub is like right on the way between your pickup and your drop off for the other one. By the time you get to Grubhub, that food might be ready. And so, you know, it, it, it goes back and forth. But, you know, the thing is with Grubhub is it's like they're dispatching is their inconsistency. And the problem with Grubhub also is just that in my market anyway, I find this, that you're more likely to uh, end up having to wait for an order on Grubhub. It's more likely to happen there with any than any of the other uh, options with that. And when you are multi-apping, when you're mul working multiple apps, if you kind of follow, if, if you see that commitment the way that I do, that's not always a good fit for uh, work, working more than one app. Okay, so what about DoorDash? DoorDash provides, I think, some of the best pre-acceptance information out there, and that's that's very useful. If you've got Android and you've got their floating widget, that can be huge because you can actually look up the customer's address before accepting. And when you get the specific address, that just gives you more information to help you evaluate and try and juggle offers against one another. And that can be that can be great. I can mention that, you know, how Grubhub does every two minutes uh, on their orders and DoorDash can be just the opposite. They're rapid fire. Now, sometimes that's good, you know, because as soon as you reject an order, it's like another one could be right there. And there's times that's good because then you're more likely to find one that fits. But man, it can be annoying at times, too. And so, you know, that's kind of back and forth. But that's that's more in just like getting those offers and everything like that. The one thing that really stands out to me with DoorDash as far as how it works with multi-apping is their zones. DoorDash divides the market up into a lot smaller zones, and you have to log into that micro zone is what I call it. But, you know, you've got to log into that smaller region where with everybody else, you just you log in and you're in your market and it's just based on wherever you are. Well, and I think DoorDash is just trying to kind of protect those markets so that you don't have too many people logged into any one area and also try and manage so that they can kind of keep the load balanced well enough with drivers. I get it, but it really does make a problem when you're trying to, you know, work with multiple apps because what happens when you pick up a delivery with somebody else and it takes you out of that zone, well, now you got an issue because you can't get anything outside of that zone you know, what do you do? Are you going to, are you going to double back to where you were? I don't like doing that. And and that's one reason I don't like DoorDash as much, even if I'm there. Or the other thing you got to do is you got to uh, log out and then you got to log into the zone where you're at. And that's not always possible because that zone might be grayed out as I was talking about the gray zones or something. It might not be available. So you've got the possibility of just not being available. The flip side is DoorDash does have a pause feature, so you can pause on a delivery. So once you get done, you could maybe hit pause, hoping that maybe you're going to get back into that zone. But that's DoorDash. At least that's that's the highlights to me. What about Uber Eats? One of the biggest things that I see in their favor is flexibility. You can log in, you can log out. You don't have to worry about schedules. You just go available, and then you decide when you're not done, you're done. And... Uh, as that makes a great fit for multi-apping because especially doing that toggle on, toggle off in stage two. On my market, Uber Eats is a lot more consistent when it comes to sending me to where food is ready. You, I think you really want to focus on having at least one app where you know that the food is more likely to be ready. I wait a lot less on Uber Eats than I do for anybody else, and that makes them a real good fit. You know, that can be critical. Now, for the longest time, Uber Eats was a non-player for me. I would not do multi-apping. I'd hardly do any apps with them because with Uber Eats, you didn't know where the deliveries are going, but they've changed that. And actually, they've been improving the information to the point where they're getting close to DoorDash as far as the quality of the information. There's still a couple things that are a little fuzzy, but 
it's getting easier to know where you're going and that makes it easier to mix them in with everything. Now, unfortunately with Uber Eats, once you've accepted, you can't go back and pull up the address. So you have to remember where you were going and I've, I've had too many times that I've forgotten. So that can create a problem. But once you've picked up the food though, you know where you're going. And, you know, so it can be sometimes a little harder to evaluate an offer when you're on delivery for Uber Eats. Um, but I found them to be a pretty good mix because of the flexibility. Postmates. Postmates is dead to me. I'm sorry. I, I won't do them. And I won't do them on individual deliveries. And I definitely won't do them on stacked or multi-app. And there is one reason and one reason only. And that has to do with the fact that they have a tendency to just add deliveries to your queue without giving you the chance to accept or reject the addition. And to me, that is a deal breaker. That is, that's enough right there. And, and the thing is, is let's say you took a Postmates delivery and now you're looking at somebody else, but then all of a sudden Postmates throws something into the mix. You don't have the option to reject that. And the only thing you can do is if you don't want to do that second delivery, you don't know where you're going for one thing, you don't know very well anyway. And so you either have to uh, take that delivery and that screws everything up or you have to cancel it. And when you do that, you cancel both deliveries or all three or whatever. I've had times where they stacked four different deliveries on me. And so it's, it's screwed up and uh, it is such a breach of the independent contractor relationship that I've got nothing to do with them right now. Now, if you're not bothered by this, Postmates and other things can be good for multi-apping. And it comes down to the flexibility that they offer. I think you've got a little more room to kind of know where you're going, at least as far as the map and the ability to kind of go back to a map after you've taken an order. You still can't pull up the address, like, and it's a lot like Uber Eats, but you can log in, you can log off. And that's, that's a lot like Uber Eats in that area. The flexibility could make them a good multi-app partner if it weren't for those unauthorized additions. Now, who's the best? I don't know. There is a best, you know. I think it's kind of mixed. There's some good things. There's some issues with each. If you're in a zone, though, let's say if you're in a market where you've got a lot of drivers and it is hard to get scheduled on DoorDash and Grubhub, you're going to be a little more careful about trying to you know, use them with somebody else. And especially you're going to probably be careful about trying to blend them together because they may not be a good mix as far as just those two together. I think Uber Eats has improved a lot because of the improvements they've made in showing you where you're going. I don't know that, you know, any of these platforms is really motivated to make changes to make multi-apping better because they want you doing their deliveries. You know, they don't want you going out and running other things. I get that. The bottom line, here's the thing that I really encourage you, though, is remember that commitment you made. Remember that on the one side, you agreed on a delivery by delivery basis. And so you're free to go ahead once you've dropped off, once you've completed a delivery to pick up with somebody else. You're free to go ahead and even take more than one delivery at the same time for different apps. But remember your commitment. Don't do it if it's going to make you late, if it's going to you know, degrade the quality of the delivery for the other customer. That's hard to do, and but part of it is it takes practice. But remember your commitment. It begins and ends with the delivery that said itself. Now that said, I really encourage you to spread your wings. I think, I think the reason that I'm able to stay consistent myself is because of the multi-apping. Because if one slows down, I can switch to the other, and I've gotten to the point where I can do that. And I've gotten to a point where I'm, I'm a lot better at finding different deliveries that match up with each other. But the main thing that I really encourage is don't rely on one customer so heavily that a slow time or an app crash, anything else, derails your ability to keep earning. That's going to wrap it up for today, folks. And um, one question I'd ask is, is this website, is, is the entrecourier.com or is the Deliver On Your Business podcast helping you in any way with your delivery business? Because if it is, can you let other people know so that we can help them as well to help them Kind of embrace this role of being a business owner. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do right now is embrace that role. Remember that you are running a business. So go out there and be a boss. Be the boss. 